in Tunis. We're going to stay there, though, and speak to political analyst uh, Youssef Sharif. Thank you for joining us here on France 24. Thank you. Your office is not very far from one of those where one of those attacks happened. Did you hear it? No, because and that shows that the explosion was not very big. Uh, so the and actually, if you see the traces of the attack, uh, it's mainly uh, it, it did kill, of course, someone and injured a few people. But there was no, um, I mean, no no big deflagration on the ground, and uh, so not people who were not in the immediate uh, place of the attack did not really hear it. And that's as Father was saying, it's very similar to the attack that happened in October last year uh, in the Habibur Giba Avenue. Makeshift devices, uh, what does that tell you? Sorry? What, what does it tell you, the fact that uh, the, uh, the impact of the blasts was limited in scope? Hmm. Well, I, I think it shows that these, uh, the group that probably uh, did this attack and the other attack in the uh, police station uh, is strong enough to do a coordinated attack because now we're, most people think it's a coordinated attack, but uh, they don't have enough um, military uh, material to, to do something big or to uh, stage uh, spectacular attacks. Um, and uh, this, this says that at least in the last uh, three years, uh, th this reminds us that at least in the last three years there was uh, an improving security situation in the country and that um, at least until now we haven't seen the spectacular attacks we've seen in 2015 or early 2016. What are the possible suspected groups that could be behind this? I mean, until now, most of the attacks that took place in Tunisia since uh, the, for, for the last six years were either uh, where either the blame was either on ISIS or on Al Qaeda. Uh, although um, some of them went uh, without any uh, claim of responsibility. So usually these are the two groups that are uh, accused. But uh, again, I mean, the, when, when you see the, the kind of attacks that happened, uh, it shows you that the, the groups, at least the local groups that organized these uh, attacks, um, do not have the capabilities that some of their peers have in places like uh, Egypt or, uh, or Libya or elsewhere. Uh, Youssef Sharif, uh, Tunisia, of course, the nation that spawned the Arab Spring with those democratic elections that we were talking about earlier back in uh, 2014. At the same time, a huge exporter a few years back of jihadists to Syria and Iraq. People were saying, oh, it's, it's a ticking time bomb. Those people are going to come back. But as you've just pointed out, uh, the security situation has improved. What do you make of it all? I mean, um, of course, that problem will, will always be around, that fear of more attacks will always be around. Uh, what you just mentioned, the fact that many Tunisians went to fight in Syria and Iraq, uh, means that uh, there, is, um, th there is a risk in the future. But uh, frankly, when we look, when we are on the ground, we do not see that risk every day. And uh, it is not, um, I mean, be it this, the, the attacks that happened today or what, what happened over the last two years shows that, yes, that threat is there, yes, the risk is there, but uh, it's not necessarily impacting Tunisia and it's not necessarily impacting life in Tunisia and the, uh, security, situ the security situation is more or less under uh, control. The big attacks that uh, people here remember are the ones on the Bardo Museum, the one uh, at the beach, uh, at the resort that targeted foreign tourists in, in, in Sousse. Um, the the um, uh, in Jerba, excuse me. The the uh, the, the the question is Seuss, actually. Seuss, excuse me. Yes, thank you, uh, Youssef Sharif. The uh, the the um, now you're seeing again more limited in scope, but but also uh, you, you're wondering why they're targeting more security services. Mm -hmm. So. The attacks of Bardo and Sus were uh, clearly targeting tourists. Uh, and as far as I remember, they are the only ones that, uh, only that targeted tourists uh, 100%. And they succeeded, actually. They succeeded in, uh, the, I mean, the groups that uh, perpetrated these attacks succeeded in 
uh, taking down the tourism sector in Tunisia and, uh, and pushing Tunisia towards one of its harshest economic crises. Uh, but then, before that and after that, most of the attacks targeted either the police or the military. Uh, so not tourists and not civilians, the police and the military. So the attacks we've seen today are part of the same uh, trend that uh, target specifically uh, police and, um, and the army, uh, and uh, where, where civilian casualties are very limited. And this is, many people think this is a long-term strategy by these groups who try not to alienate the civilian population by targeting uh, only the, the police and the army whom they uh, say they are uh, part of the of, of, uh, of, uh, authoritarian system that is against Islam, etc., etc. Uh, and so, um, so here, we, I think we're in the continuation of this same uh, trend, um, but because these actions are so isolated and uh, because they are, I mean, they are not really uh, do, doing much. Uh, they're not necessarily affecting. Uh, they're not changing the um, uh, the situation in the country. However, one very important part about tourism. Uh, tourists usually do not look at these details. They won't see that there is a limited number of casualties, etc., etc. They will only hear that there was an attack, and so many will think twice about coming to uh, to Tunisia. Uh, which is uh, which is why many people, as uh, Father was just mentioning, many people are worried that this may ap um, uh, affect the economic situation in the country. And also because also you, you talked about elections, um, Tunisia is going towards its uh, third round of uh, free and fair elections since the revolution. Uh, but many people recently have been saying that we need to postpone these elections. So these kind of attacks may encourage people who are uh, on the side of um, of saying uh, of postponing the elections, it may encourage them to say that the situation, the security situation is not um, uh, ready for, uh, for elections and we will hear more and more voices calling for uh, a postmon postponement of the election, which is, I think, uh, would be a very dangerous thing to do. Yeah, because Youssef Sharif, this news that's coming in of uh, the the first the country's first democratically elected president falling ill for the second time inside of a, a week, also a reminder of uh, uh, how far Tunisia has come. How would you say going into that election cycle, its uh, institutions are doing? So. For the moment, the institutions are working. The, uh, the institution that, is, uh, th that organizes elections it has been put in place, uh, it is ready, and uh, the parliament is working, uh, a lot of institutions are in place. But there is one institution, one uh, major and capital institution that, is, that has not been established, which is the Constitutional Court. Um, and so today, as the president is in hospital, we don't know much about his uh, health and uh, about uh, his whereabouts. So uh, in, um, pe most people are now thinking, what happens if, uh, if he cannot return to the presidency? Uh, you know, I mean, as you said, it's the second time that he's admitted in hospital. He's uh, 92 years old. So, um, so anything can happen. And there is no constitutional court to say exactly uh, what, uh, who, who would uh, replace him, what will happen when it comes to the election, etc., etc. And uh, now there is, um, I heard there is an emergency meeting at the parliament, uh, maybe to discuss some of these points, but again, there is a limited communication coming from uh, that side. Um, and, um, and so, yes, I mean, the, the fact that there is no constitutional court puts the uh, democratic transition somewhat in, um, you know, in, in, a, in, a, in a situation that is not uh, as good as uh, one would expect, be it a few months before the elections or uh, in the face of, uh, of situations such as this one where the president is in hospital. Youssef Sharif, many thanks for joining us live there from Tunis.